This video is sponsored by Licked. Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Ines Leia and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to see how to create some really awesome Iron Man helmet visual effects in Adobe After Effects. So without further ado, I will be providing you with the tutorial files in order to follow this tutorial. And I also have a link for you where you can download the HUD elements for free. We have a freebie pack. We also have a premium pack with a lot more variation. And if you're using a lot of HUD packs, I'm sure you're gonna dig it. But yeah, links are all in the description and without further ado let's get started all right so i am here in adobe after effects and as you can see this is the footage that we will be working with i'm looking around a little bit try to imagine yourself like you're sitting in the helmet so you don't have like too much movement don't go and twist your entire body uh, we're kind of stuck in in a small space also try to film yourself with a black background and then we can adjust everything uh, later on then I'm going to be using the premium elements just because I have a lot more variation in there. But for the freebies, you can also use these and just use all the techniques that I explain in this video and apply it to the freebies pack or even uh, your own HUD elements. It really doesn't come down to what we will be using exactly. All right, so the first thing that we'll do is import my footage into a new composition. And because we have a very solid background, we only have the detail in my face. So this is going to make it easy to track I will track the camera. All right, so once your face is tracked, you should see these dots sticking to your face like so. What I will do is just select the frontal ones and then you can right click and create a new null and camera. This will make a camera and now your face is 3D tracked. So what we can do is now we can import any kind of element like this one here. And we can also turn this into a 3D layer. And then for the track null, we press P on the keyboard and also R on the keyboard. And we can copy both the position and orientation and paste it onto the battery. Now it's also sticking to my face. Whoa, 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 let's take a step back and enjoy this awesome song from Lake.co. I know, you're probably thinking, how is he using this popular song in his videos? Well, Lake.co is a game-changing platform where you can download commercialized songs and use them in your videos. Whether it's YouTube, Facebook or Instagram, you can be using commercialized songs and use them in your videos without being demonetized, which is incredible and something we haven't seen before. Definitely go and check them out with the link in the description below. And if you click the link now, you can actually download your first commercial song for free and use it in your videos. And on your second order, you get 50% off. So definitely go and check them out with the link in the description below. Link.co, they're the way to go. <laughs> So we already have something tracked to my face, but now what we wanna do is bring it back a little bit because we don't want it sticking to my face, but hovering in front of it. And then we want to scale it down. And we're also going to change the blending mode to a screen. Now you can place it wherever you want, and now you can continue doing this with anything else. Alright, so here we have all our elements pasted in here. You can each uh, click on each one and then still individually go and manipulate them to make them all perfect. But I just quickly did this to demonstrate what we can do. I put everything in 3D space, moved it around and etc. I make sure also these are in 3D space. All right, so once you've done this, what's also very typical for the Iron Man uh, helmet hood elements is that they all move around very quickly. One comes in and then moves away and then another element comes in and it moves away. So what you can do for this one here is um, just go over here, press P on the keyboard and then click on the stopwatch here. And then like one, two, three, four frames further, you can just sweep it out here. And then we also toggle the motion blur here and then we have this quick motion that it goes away and then obviously when something goes away you should have something else that comes in so maybe this one will come and press p on the keyboard click on the stopwatch but instead of going further we're going backwards with the page up key one two three four and here we want to bring this off frame 
And so what you want to do is do this for all the elements, let things come in, let others go out and kind of make it interesting. The more things that happen in the frame, the more things that people have to look at, the more complicated it looks and the more advanced it looks. So as you can see right here, we have these quick movements in, which are really, really cool. I'm going to do a little bit more of that, but just uncheck your motion blur while you're working on your shot, because this really tends to make your project a lot slower, but it is a super important step to make it more realistic. So at the end of your project, definitely don't forget to apply motion blur. And as you can see, like all these elements are coming in here and going out and I just quickly did this, but it's already looking really, really cool. So what you want to do once you're done with all of your animations, uh, you can either just select everything and then go for layer pre-compose it and then just set it back to screen here. That way we still have all the same animations. Uh, what you can also do is copy your original footage, edit copy and just go into the HUD elements and paste it here and bring it all the way on the bottom and then right click and make this a guide layer. So you can still just continue working on this just like before, but if you go here, you have a pre-composed one uh, and that way we can apply some effects to it, uh, which make it easier when you're working with 3D layers. So what I will be doing here is adding the optics compensation effect. And if we're going to increase this number, you will see that it's kind of rounding everything up and it's making it look like we're actually in the helmet and, and that's exactly what we want. And we can also add an adjustment layer on top of that. And we're going to rename this transform and we're going to add a transform effect. And we're going to zoom in here and like make it look a little bit closer to uh, the helmet. So we're actually inside of it. And then another thing that I wanna do is create a new adjustment layer and put it just in between your face and HUD element and call this a vignette. And this is where we are going to add a curves and bring down the colors quite a bit, maybe even uh, add a tint effect here. And just desaturate it quite a lot. And then with the ellipse tool, we're just going to make a small ellipse here and then subtract it and press F on the keyboard and feather it quite a bit. And for the face, we can even go and add a tint effect here. desaturate it a little bit. Uh, we can also go and create new solid layers. Um, but for this, we would actually go ahead and do it in the hit elements and create a new solid layer that actually has one of these blue colors. You can just pick a color, click OK. And we're also going to make this a 3D layer. And for this, we want to kind of mask out a part. So maybe we want to mask out right here. And we're going to press F on the keyboard and feather it quite a bit and just make sure it's kind of covering just your face. And that way we can add some reflections in there by changing the screen mode to, uh, well, the blending mode to a screen or an additive or anything else and bringing down the opacity quite a bit. But that way it looks like the HUD elements are actually reflecting on my face. Now we can also add on top of everything a effect and we're going to apply an unsharp mask we can set it to like 150 and we can duplicate it and set the radius to 25 and set this to like 25. So we have like a kind of extra detail in our HUD elements. And then for the HUD elements themselves, uh, we're going to apply to our HUD elements a solid composite and we're going to make this black. That way we kind of prepare it for glow effects. And you can either use glow uh, which is built in in Adobe After Effects, but it's not that great and it doesn't achieve that good results. Uh, but you can download our perfect glow preset from our website with the link in the description below and it is free. So why wouldn't you? Uh, and you will see the difference here if we're going to apply the perfect glow. Uh, we can decrease it a little bit here and then increase the intensity. But you can see these glows are very rich and they look very nice. Uh, the only downside here is a little bit too bright over here. So uh, we could play with all of this, increase the radius and just play with everything a little bit until you're satisfied with the look. So for the last effect that I want to apply here is to use the chromatic displacement here. I am actually using a free plugin called Quick Chromatic Aberration. Uh, it's free, you can find it online. And if you're going to be using this, it's just giving you a quick chromatic aberration effect. It was actually advised 
by Enzoe. But thank you for that. It's a, it's a great plugin. All right, so now we, we get a kind of digital look because of all the color shifts that are going on. And this is actually a really cool result, even though I say it so myself. I'm pretty satisfied with this. I hope you enjoy it as well. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more and hit the notification bell to stay notified when we upload new videos. Apart from that, I hope to see you in the next one. And until next time, create epic videos.